Here's why you're having a hard time committing to a game idea and how to pick a winner immediately. Hey, how's it going? My name is Darius and I bet you have a lot of game ideas, right? Some have high value and potential and some of them don't, right? But how do you pick one, right? And what is the actual process to help you decide which idea is worth pursuing? Well, in this video, in this article, you're going to learn how to avoid spending six months or more pursuing a game idea that ends up you know, nowhere. And you're going to get a step-by-step -step action plan showing you exactly how to pick a winning idea that you can implement right now. So don't be that game dev that spends, you know, months or years on an idea that goes nowhere or never gets finished. And don't be that game dev that, you know, hops from one idea to another. If you want to find that winning idea where you can commit to and you won't quit just because another new idea comes along, then here's what you need to know and here's what to do. So before I get into the techniques and the step-by-step -step process, I want to ask you a very important question and, and that is, what do you want out of this game dev journey? So more specifically, what I want to know is what result do you want after finishing your game? Let's imagine, for example, this is all true. You found a perfect game idea and you're willing to commit everything you got into this and you're okay with, you know, spending six months or more into this game project and you have absolutely no doubts that, you know, that this is the game you want to make, right? So let's say all that is true, right? What result do you want after finishing your game? So to help you answer this question, because it's not an easy question, let me show you three main results most game devs want. So I talk to a lot of game devs because I want to find out what makes them tick and what makes, you know, what the biggest problems are. And what I came up with is three main results a game dev wants. So the first result I noticed after talking to game devs is that they want creative control. They want to make a game that expresses their creativity. And after finishing their game, they basically all they wanted was an outlet for their creativity. And they just wanted to basically say that they just finished a game and they made a game that they wanted to make. Now for result number two, it's kind of different. Some game devs wanted to make a game for acclaim or to get recognized for their talents. So when they finished their game, they basically wanted validation from other game devs or game dev studios to recognize, you know, their skill. And also they wanted to build their skills as, you know, when they were making their game. In other words, they know that they are talented game devs and they wanted other game devs and game st or game studios to recognize that. So they're mostly doing this. They're mostly doing game dev to, you know, work on their portfolio to maybe get a job in, you know, a big AAA game company or just basically improve their game dev skills and have other game devs recognize that. So that's result number two. Here's result number three. And that is for you, game dev is like a business venture. You're treating this like a product that you're making out into the market and you're finding out what people or players want and don't want. And then you're, you're finding, you know, gaps in the market. You're trying to figure out how to uh, develop the product from, from day one that is marketable because your full aim, your aim at the end is to make an income. So in other words, you're making a game that players would love but also at the same time, you are trying to make some income so you can grow your game studio. So let me boil those three down again, right? So the first one is you're making a game for yourself. Basically, you're, you want some creative control. You want an, a, a way to express your creativity, right? The second reason is that you are making a game for your portfolio or to get uh, validation from other game devs or game studios to recognize your game talents and also at the same time improve your game development skills, right? And the third reason why you're doing game development is because maybe you're, you want to grow your game studio. You want to make an income. You want to make games that players like and, you know, help your game studio grow. Let's circle back to that question I asked in the beginning and is what result do you want after, you know, finishing your game? And these three things, these three results, these three reasons are very important to figure out right now because knowing this will help you find that winning game idea that is worth pursuing, you know, six months or more into, right? And probably after hearing all these three reasons or these three results, I bet I know what you're thinking or what you're saying is that, but you want all three, right? You want a combination of all three. You want to make a game that players like, you want to make a game that, you know, expresses your creativity. You want other game devs to recognize your talent and you want to make a lot of money and, you know, income so you can grow your game studio. You want a combination of all those three, right? But this is the reason why game devs can't commit to an idea is because they don't know exactly what they want. And the funny thing and the counterintuitive thing is by trying to chase all those three things, all those three results, you always end up nowhere. So let's keep going and I'll show you some more insights to get out of this rut. And then later I'll show you some techniques and some step-by-step -step action plans you can use right now to help you immediately. You've probably heard this phrase before where, you know, the person that chases two rabbits catches neither, right? And so this is the core idea of this article. And that's basically, you know how I told you about the three results most game devs want when they finish a game, right? The first one is to be, you know, be able to express their creativity and make a game that they've always wanted to make, or they want to make a game so they can get recognition from game dev or game studios to recognize their game talent and also improve their, you know, uh, game dev 
skills. And the third reason is so that they can make an income so they can, you know, sell their game and grow their game studio. But often what you want and often what other game devs want and often what, you know, other players want are not the same thing. Why? Well, because all those three things are in conflict with each other. For example, say you made a game that you always wanted to make. It let you express your personality, let you express your creativity, it let you express your own wants and needs. Well, this game will look very different from a commercial game where you have to, you know, do market research, where you have to talk to players and find out what their needs and wants are and make a game around that. Because often what your needs and wants are are vastly different than what a player's wants and needs are. Or say you're making a game that has a cool feature or a very unique feature that will, you know, really impress other game devs or game studios. Then this game will be totally different than, you know, a personal passion project, right? Because you're doing it for, to show off the, the feature and you're doing, and a personal project is more, you know, intimate and more, is more just for you. So in other words, a game that shows off your, you know, your skills and your talents is way different than a passion project where you don't really care what other people think, right? Or, and this is where, you know, game devs get in big trouble is that they make a game that they think that they can reach all three. They make a game that, you know, meet, meets their needs and wants, meets the needs and wants of other game developers and meets the needs and wants of players, right? They think that there's a, a perfect game like that, that, you know, covers everybody. But when you chase multiple opportunities, when you try to, you know, try to get everybody, that's when you are making a game that will lead you to nowhere. Like I said, by chasing multiple opportunities, you'll get neither, right? And by going for all three, you're going to alienate everybody, right? That's why you can't catch, you know, all of them. By narrowing your focus, by knowing exactly what you want will help you decide on which game idea is worth pursuing. So you need to decide what you want right now. And I'm asking you this important question because of course you want all three, right? But like I said before, if you try to chase all three, this is the reason why you're, you know, you're not following through or, you know, why you're hopping from idea to idea and that why, you know, your game dev is going nowhere. So it's very important to have a core vision. So do you want a game that expresses your creativity? Do you want to make a game that validates your talent and gets, you know, the attention of AAA game developers or, you know, other game devs? Or do you want to make a game that's highly marketable so you can make some income and grow your game studio? So which of these three is the most important to you right now? Because knowing this will help you, you know, find a game or pick a winning game idea that is worth pursuing. So why does this work? Why does, you know, being very rigid and picking, you know, one of these three? Well, it works because when you match your wants and needs to, you know, a game idea to a result that you want, then you're less likely to change your idea, you know, when things get hard or when you see a new opportunity. And by knowing exactly what you want out of game dev, you know, the three results, this will help you keep motivated because when you don't have a clear vision or clear idea of what you want, then you're more likely to flake out and, you know, again, you know, hop to another idea. So for example, maybe you're making a game of a story you just need to tell and finishing this game will fulfill your need to express your creativity. So even though you know you might not make a lot of money out of it, you're not going to change course because having a creative outlet is more important than, you know, making money or showing off your game to other game devs. Or maybe you have an idea with a really innovative, you know, design or feature that you want to show off for, you know, and get recon recognized by, you know, game devs and game studios. So, you know, you make a demo and you add it to your portfolio or your, or your website. Then, you know, you take some initiative and you email, you know, other game devs and game studios and ask them for their feedback. So for you in this, you know, example, developing your skills as a game developer and improving your talent is more important than, you know, making a passion project or making a game that, you know, is highly marketable that makes a lot of money. So you're willing to stick it out and commit to this project because to you, developing your skills and developing your talents and also getting recognized for it is more important to you than, you know, a passion project or, you know, making a marketable game that, you know, sells a lot of copies. Or maybe you found a gap in the market in, in a genre that no other game is filling and you know, and you talk to game, you know, players and gamers and you learn what they want and don't want. You've basically done some market research and you feel that you have a highly marketable game that can make you some income, right? So you create a, a small demo and then, you know, test it out on some players to see the reaction. And, you know, you, there is some interest and that interest is kind of validating your idea that this game is marketable and you can make some income from it, right? So knowing that you're willing to give up a little bit of your selfish needs, you know, of making a passion project or making a game that, you know, impresses other game devs and you're okay with making a game specifically made for players that, you know, meet their wants and needs, not necessarily your wants and needs. And again, you're willing to commit to this idea because the income potential is there and you're willing to stick it out because making an income and growing your game studio is more important to you than, you know, making a passion project or, you know, trying to get 
the attention of other game devs or game studios. So let me ask you again, what's important to you right now? Number one, is it express who you are, express your creativity, have a creative outlet? Or do you want to get attention from other game devs or big game dev studios? Or do you want to publish a game that will help your game studio grow? You need to know your core vision because this will help you decide on which game is worth pursuing, you know, six months or more into. And I know that it's very tempting to try to go for all three, but you need to focus on one because this will help you, you know, stay committed and keep you motivated. And like I said, if you try to chase all three, you're going to chase neither and again, game dev, you know, goes nowhere. All right, finally, let's get into some actual techniques, some actual step-by-step, -step, you know, action plans to help you do all of this, right? So here's how to avoid wasting time on game ideas that go nowhere. And here's the step-by-step -step action plan. So by doing this action plan, you're going to learn how to commit to your ideas because, you know, new ideas always make you insecure. So what, what I'm trying to say is that when you find a new opportunity or a new idea, your old idea just seems out of date or there's something wrong with that old idea because new ideas always you know, seem to be more, uh, there's more opportunity with a new idea. So that's why we quit ideas and pursue a new idea. But then this cycle continues, right? This is why we don't get things done or why we spend six months or, or years. And then at the end of it, we have nothing to show for, right? So to help you commit to an idea, so you avoid, you know, jumping ship and, you know, continuing the cycle, here's step one. And that is stop trying to be everything to everyone. So there's nothing wrong making a game that lets you express who you are as an artist or as a storyteller or as a game developer, right? And there's nothing wrong making a game that shows off your your talents and your skills as a game developer. Say you want to make a cool or a very innovative feature that will get the attention of, you know, game devs or game studios. And there's nothing wrong making a commercial game for the sole purpose of, you know, making income so you can grow your game studio. But there is a danger when you try to, you know, mesh or combine all three of those together. Because like I said, when you chase all three, you catch neither. So you got to pick who your, you know, your target market is. Is it you? Is it game developers or game studios? Or is it players? So that's the first step is to decide who is this game for? Is it for you? For game devs? For, you know, game studios? Or for players? I mean, don't get me wrong. You know, there's, there's the game developers like Hideo Kojima that can do all three, right? They make a game they, they want to make. They impress other game developers. And it's a highly successful financial game, right? But right now, when no one knows about you or hasn't heard about you, you need to focus on one aspect. You need to focus on one of those three. So focusing on who your target is will help you decide which game idea to pursue. And I will get into details later in step two and three. But right now, I want you to decide, is the game you're going to make, is it for you? Is it for game devs? Or is it for players? Okay, so let's move on to step two. And that is open a Google worksheet and then list all your game ideas. So this is a very simple step. All you have to do, you know, uh, name the first column, column A, uh, game ideas, and then down the column, start writing your game ideas. Try to use short descriptions because you know what they'll be, right? And the idea is to go as fast as you can. So you're basically brainstorming and your 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 ideas are just flowing out, right? And sometimes you want to, if you, you have a game name, add that in there too. But the idea is to go as fast as you can and write down all the game ideas you have, use short descriptions, like I said, you know what the games will be. You don't have to get into details about everything. You can have the name and a short description and just keep, you know, going down the column, writing down all your ideas. And don't worry about if they're good ideas yet or bad ideas, because on paper, most games don't sound good. Like, you know, for example, Super Mario Brothers. On paper, you're a, the hero is a plumber. You bounce on mushrooms. You save a, a mushroom princess and you fight, you know, a big turtle. I mean, on paper, it doesn't sound good, right? So don't worry about if the idea is bad or not, you'll figure this out later in step in the next steps. So this leads me to step number three, and that is to match your game idea to the who the target market is. So basically, if is it for you, for game devs or game studios, or for the player? So here's my example, and just let me read what I have. So I have basically game ideas, and then my target, you know, column A and column B. And the first idea was I called it uh, Dreamscape Odyssey. It's basically a platformer. You navigate dreams and you unravel my, you know, my personal story as you progress. So, you know, the story progresses as you go through the game. And so the target is obviously me. This is the game I would want to, you know, make. And that would be a passion project. So then my next game idea would be, I called it Par Parallel Pals, right? So basically this would be where a player controls two main characters and each in their own par parallel universe. So you have a split screen and you have to kind of, it's like a puzzle game, right? So... Um, this probably wouldn't, you know, it's not a passion project, but um, and I can see how players can, you know, find this really annoying. But 
if I can pull it off, maybe I can impress game devs or game studios, you know, kind of having a cool feature like that, right? And then I have my third example is, I call it motorbike mayhem. I've done my research and I found that, you know, there's a lot of uh, motorbike, well, there's not a lot of motorbike games, but there's a lot of players that want motorbike games, right? So I came up with, you know, uh, motorbike mayhem, where she's basically a precision platformer where you, you're, you made for, or precision platformer made for, you know, motorbike fans. And again, the target would be a player. So the idea here is to organize all your thoughts so that way you can have a, you know, a bird's eye view, a top level view to help you decide what's important to you, right? So for example, if I wanted to make a game that expresses my, you know, personality, my uh, creativity, I would work on, you know, a Dreamscape Odyssey. Right? This game will fulfill my own wants and needs, right? But say, for example, I wanted to build my portfolio. I'm looking for, you know, I want to work for a AAA company and I want to make a game that shows off my talents and my skills and gets recognized, you know, gets recognized by other, you know, game devs, then I would work on, you know, the parallel Pels, you know, just work on a feature so I can put it in my portfolio. And then I would go reach out for those game devs and game studios and get their feedback on it, right? Just to get some attention. And at the same time, doing this kind of project helps me build my own skills as a developer. It's not necessarily something commercial or it's ne not something necessarily a passion project, but it's a way to develop my skills and get recognized for it. But if I wanted to make a game that, you know, would sell that is highly profitable, I would focus on uh, motorbike mayhem. I would start very simple. I would make like mock screenshots in Photoshop of what I think the game would look like. And then I would reach out to communities, you know, that are like platformers and motorbikes and see what, you know, their reaction is, what their interests are, right? If I see that there is an interest, I would pursue even further, maybe make a small demo and then test out that demo before I even, you know, start assembling a team, right? I would find out that there, this game is highly marketable and that will make me some income. And again, this might not be the way you would go uh, about, you know, if you had a passion project is if you have a passion project, you're just going to do a game that you want to make, right? But if you want to make a highly marketable game, then you got to take these, you know, steps into product development and market research to find out if this is a game that will make you some income because you don't want to spend, you know, six months or a year making a game and then finding out that there is no interest for it. The reason I want you to do all these three steps is because your wants and needs will determine what game idea has the top priority to you, right? So in other words, by matching your wants and needs to a game idea will help you decide if it's worth spending six months or more on this idea. So for example, if you're okay with spending the next six months making a game that allows you to express your personality and is a creative outlet for you, then all that time and effort will be worth it, right? Or for example, if you're experimenting with a new mechanic or a new feature and you want to get the attention from other game devs or other game studios, then spending the next six months on this, you know, this really small feature or mechanic so you can show it off to game devs and build your portfolio will be worth it. And maybe other players won't care about it or it's not really a passion project. It, that, that, that doesn't matter because you're working on developing your own skills, right? Or if you want to make a game that's highly marketable and you want to make some income so you can build your your game studio, then it'll be worth spending six months just doing basic product development and market research, and not necessarily, you know, even writing code or doing art. You're just going to spend most of the time testing ideas, right? For you, that six months will be worth it because you know that in the long term, all this effort will get you that income and, you know, you're going to make a game that is highly profitable to help you grow your game studio. But the danger here is that if you try to chase all three, then you're going to get nowhere, right? You're going to hop from one idea to another, a new idea will come up, You'll just drop your other idea because you don't have that focus. You don't have that core vision that you were going to stick to because having that core vision will help you keep motivated and won't, you know, you won't be tempted to, you know, basically jump ship and try another idea. So what if you can't decide what's important to you right now? What if you're still stuck and you're trying to chase all those three rabbits, right? Basically, you're trying to make a game for you, making a game for other game developers so you can get some attention and you want to make a highly profitable game. What if you can't, you know, you can't decide which was is important to you? Okay, to help you get you out of this rut, let me sum up an experience that a game dev had and probably an experience you may have had, had also. And that is, it was very rewarding making a game that was a piece of art. And it's an expression of what I and my team value most. And the game has been, been appreciated by a large majority of people. The reception has been validating, but it's hard to reconcile all that because the lack of financial success. Although we made a game we wanted to make, and it got a lot of good reception, the lack of sales makes it a mixed bag of emotions. So this experience, this phrase from a game dev basically sums up the problem of, you know, trying to chase all of the, those three 
results. So what I would do is to focus on financial success first because success begets success, right? Because if you can make a game that other players like and that are willing to you know, give you money for and help you grow your income, the other two results will come along, right? You're gonna be making a game that you kind of wanna make and you will get recognition from other game devs because if you get highly successful, you will get to eventually pick and choose what projects you will make in the future, right? And again, there's nothing wrong making a passion project for you that expresses your personality, that is an expression of your creativity. And there's nothing wrong making a game that, you know, focuses on a mechanic that impresses other game devs and, you know, game studios. But you're going to put a lot of time, energy, and money into this project, right? But by focusing on making a game that meets the needs and wants of a player and making a commercial game, then those other two results are going to follow through. So it's more optimal, more efficient to try to make a game that, you know, focuses on the needs and wants of a player and trying to focus on, you know, making a commercial game that will help you make some income and grow your studio. Because like I said, once your game studio grows, that's when you can, you can start, you know, choosing your own projects and kind of making games that are more passion project. Because once you have that huge community, they're going to be very excited to see what you come up with next, right? And you see this all the time where, you know, game studios make a highly commercial game. And then as they, you know, make other games, they're going to, Kind of venture out and they're going to try to experiment with their own passion projects but again my point here is when you're starting out and nobody knows you about you yet no one you know has heard of you about you yet you want to focus on the needs and wants of a, a player because that will help you you know gain some success and grow your studio then you can start focusing on you know making you know cool mechanics and innovations and doing passion projects and i'm not saying pander to the audience right I'm not saying make a game that you're going to hate making. I'm not saying go into, you know, mobile, um, the market and, you know, focus on micro transactions. I'm not saying do all any of that, right? You're not trying to be like this, you know, cold, you know, corporate machine that just spits out uh, games just to make, you know, a, a profit. You can still make a game that interests you, but in that focuses on focuses on the needs and wants of a player. So if you're stuck and you're not sure who your target market is, is it you, is it game devs or game studios, or is it the player? I would say focus on the player. So here's your action plan right now. And I'm serious, do this right now. Open a Google doc, write down two, you'll have two columns, you'll have game ideas and the target, right? Write down all your game ideas in column A. Like I said, try to be as fast as you can. Just do short descriptions and maybe give it a name. And then on column two, Go through and decide which game is this game made for. Is it made for you? Is it made for other game devs? Or is it made for a player? And then out of those three, which is the most important to you? And like I said, there's nothing wrong with making a passion project. There's nothing wrong with making a game that shows off your skills, you know, just to get attention from other game devs. And there's nothing wrong making a commercial game. But what the danger is, is trying to make a game that tries to tailor for all three, right? So you get, need to focus. You got to have a core vision on what you really want. Think about it in the future. Think about in six months, will it be worth it to make a passion project for you to express your personality or express your creativity? Or is it worth it spending six months, you know, working on a mechanic so you can show off your uh, innovative skills to other game devs, right? Maybe you want a job or maybe you want to get attention from a big AAA company. And, you know, this is the best way, right? Um, or do you want to make, make a commercial game so you're okay spending the you know, next six months doing product development and market research? So that's important because once you know your core vision, then you won't flake out and you will commit to what you're working on. And you'll stay committed on course. Even if new ideas or new opportunities come along, you're not going to you know jump ship and start that. You're going to stay committed. Now, I know what you might be saying is like, this is great, man, but you know, I'm still having trouble focusing. I'm still having trouble deciding. I'm having trouble managing my time. I can't, I can't find the time in my day to work on this. I want a game right now. I want to start right now and I want to do all this work, right? Well, if this is the case, what I would like you to do right now is to read this or watch this and then the description, the link will be in the description below. And I'll show you techniques how to get twice as much done in half the time. And you're not going to get boring time management, you know, techniques or systems that are probably out of date, and you've probably heard of them already, right? You'll learn how to optimize your time by squeezing as much value as you can out of each hour. And you'll learn how to push your mental capabilities to their limits so you get more done in one hour than you do now, you know, in two hours or three. And you'll learn how to do all of this automatically so you don't have to, you know, rely on willpower and hard discipline, right? I wanna make this as easy as I can for you. So in the description below, click that link and it'll show you how to dramatically increase 
your productivity and help you finish your game faster and help you find you know game ideas that are worth pursuing. Again, my name is Darius. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening and good luck on your game dev journey. See ya.